and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube uh, for some Esper Reanimator. This is our next donation and deck of the day. We're going to be playing a league with this where we'll play till we win five or lose two. Um, hopefully we do a little bit better than our first two decks today. I think we will. We got a pretty sweet one here where we are trying to uh, reanimate Agent of Treachery. That's right. This deck's all about Agent of Treachery. It's just the cornerstone of the deck. When it, As you all know how uh, devastating this card can be. Uh, it enters, you get to gain control of any permanent, you know, lands, artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, creatures, nothing safe from this treacherous agent. So we need to uh, reanimate this from our graveyard. So to get it into our graveyard, we have uh, four Wall of Lost Thoughts that we'll be milling ourselves over. Plus we have the Tonebound Liches that we get to um, do some looting with. So those are our main ways to get cards into our graveyard. Um, the way to get it back into play, the main thing that we're going to be going with here is Blood for Bones. You know, we sacrifice a creature, return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then we can also put another creature from our graveyard to our hand. So with, with Blood for Bones, you want to play a lot of creatures. And so that's why you see we have a whole lot of two and three mana, or sorry, two and three mana creatures. Um, cause you need to be able to sacrifice a creature. And then plus you want to put a creature into play and also put a creature back into your hand. So it's good to have a, a variety of creatures there. Uh, we're basically kind of splashing white for Charming Prince, where Charming Prince can, can do a lot for us. You know, we can scry early on if we need it, um, but it's also like the flicker part. You know, so, like, this is a, a big time flicker deck. So, you know, like, we'll be able to flicker Agent of Treacheries and be able to steal more things, which is pretty awesome. Um, we can, you know, flicker our Wall of Lost Thoughts if we need to, or Tonebound Lich. Um, we also have a Fibble Thip just to be able to draw cards and be able to sacrifice. We can flicker that as well. So we have some good flicker targets early on. <clears throat> but then, of course, the Agent of Treacheries. That's, like, really the main thing. Also, since we're self-milling, we want to be able to, like, self-mill and, and mill over Quasi-Duplicate or even discard Quasi-Duplicate to Tonebound Lich. And then we can jumpstart it from the graveyard. So it's basically like milling over a spell. And we can jumpstart the Quasi-Duplicate, of course, targeting Agent of Treachery and steal even more things um, with it. All right, so for backup plans, uh, well, we also have, like, Soren that can minus and bring back Charming Prince right away to be able to flicker Agent of Treachery. <laughs> it's all about this Agent of Treachery uh, with our game plan here. So, yeah, for our backup plans, we got a Midnight Reaper in here to get us some more card advantage with these cheap creatures dying, um, a Deputy. Um, that's going to be pretty vulnerable, but it's kind of just nice to have access to a Deputy of Detention for different board states, especially good to be able to get rid of different tokens. Um, we have Bond Revival as our backup reanimation spell. If we're not blood, blood for boning, where um, Bond Revival can give give these creatures like haste and everything. Um, a, a specific card that's really good to Bond Revival is Dracuseth. And so we have one Dracuseth in here that we can maybe mill over and reanimate with Bond Revival. Um, obviously, we're not playing red mana. We're not trying to cast Dracuseth at all. And so we don't really want to have a whole bunch of Dracuseths because we don't really want to be drawing them too much. But it's just kind of in here that could be just a devastating target to Bond Revival. <clears throat> Scholar of the Ages is pretty awesome at getting back Blood for Bones and Bond Revival. So we can just keep on um, bringing back more Agent of Treacheries and doing all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have like two five drops that are just kind of like some mid game. Uh, if we need to just cast a couple of pretty impactful creatures. We have uh, Cavalier of Night that can sacrifice um, any of these small creatures and be a removal spell for us, plus a good body. And then Kenrith that can also reanimate stuff with its ability. So that's pretty awesome. Um, plus, if we're behind, we can use Kenrith with the uh, target player gains five life part too. We can really stabilize and gain a whole lot of life and give us a lot of time to get a bunch of age and a treacheries out. All right, um, so that's kind of what our deck's all about. We got some anti-control stuff with some thought erasures that could also surveil and put stuff into the graveyard. Um, Dovin's Veto uh, for some counter magic. Cry the Carnarium for the um, cat matchup. Um, you know, Noxious Grasp against, like, Gruul. Just a couple more deputies is just a, a kind of a catch-all against... Uh, a wide variety of decks if deputies can be pretty good especially against decks without very much removal you know like your gruel type decks and things like that so if your opponents aren't playing very much removal we'll be using deputies 
Um, more Cavalier for creature decks and for aggro. Masker Girl, same kind of thing, giving us access to a Sweepa and some Time Wipes. So yeah, let's see how this Esper Reanimator does. Here we go. Alright, I want to make a Flicker deck when Theros comes out because there was a Flicker spell that got leaked. Ooh. Okay. Teferi's Time Twist is a really good quality Flicker spell. We had some fun with that one in the Jeskai midrange deck that we played last Sunday. That deck was pretty sweet. We had you know a bunch of Charming Prince and Teferi Time Twist and stuff in that Jeskai deck. All right, this looks good. We're gonna need to hit two lands, but that's what that's what Charming Prince does. You know, like we'll have turn two Charming Prince, be able to scry, hit our land drops, turn three Tome Bound Lich, discard the Agent of Treachery. Turn four, Blood for Bones, sack. Uh, we could sack the Charming Prince, put Charming Prince back into our hand, bring back Agent of Treachery. This is just pretty ideal here. Hey, what's up, Legion? Yeah, it is kind of awesome that a cat matchup is a thing. <laughs> yeah, may or may not have donated for that one. Yeah, I, I liked that Jeskai deck. I'm going to I'm gonna have to go back and play that one again. Hey, Miyak. Uh, that's unfortunate. Fabled Passage being our land is not going to come into play untapped for Tonebound Lynch. But I need to keep it. I need to hit land drops. Maybe I should fetch first before playing this. Yeah, because that could have been really bad. Like we have okay, never we never mind, we have five basics. I was like, what if we just have like four basics and we just mill over like all four basics? Like how and then my fable passage doesn't do anything. I know that's highly unlikely, but I suppose that could have happened. All right, uh, double, we would get double blue because of quasi-duplicate. Um, getting more black sources would help out Cavalier of Night. It's not super likely that we put... I think it's probably more likely they want the blue. You're welcome, Imperius. All right, so what is better with the Izzet Drakes? One Kefnet, two Niv, or should you remove the two Niv and add, add a Kefnet and the expansion Explosion? Um, it's a good question. I, I, it's close. Like there, it's very close. It depends on like how much counter magic's being played in the format. I, I definitely wouldn't mind going down to one Niv with that deck. I'd kind of want to play one Niv, I think. And then... I'm not sure if, like, a Kef the Kefnet or the Expansion Explosion... Which one to play there. Pretty close. You know, maybe just the Kefnet. Alright, so they can't kill Kenrith. That's good, that's good. Quasi-Duplicate does not work very well with Legendary Creatures. Probably would not... Recommend doing that. I think maybe they have heart fire. So they want to block and sacrifice. Well, they're playing like I don't know if they're playing like instant speed four damage. Otherwise, I 
I don't know. I'll just let him have it. So I, I can just reanimate. All right, so my, my options here are just reanimate, like, Agent of Treachery. Um, I can... Re oh, gosh, I have Dracuseth. I forgot that we milled over Dracuseth. I was going to say that I could just reanimate the Charming Prince to, and gain three also. What do you think of a green-white token list in the standard? There are a lot of good sweepers. A lot of people playing sweepers. But besides that... There's also a lot of good tokens. Oh, you wrote standard, but you meant pioneer? Oh. Um... I don't I don't know about green white tokens and pioneer. You have voice resurgence, that's cool. Alright, shocking in here. I can just gain ten with Kenrith. Or animate agent treachery. Yeah, we could I mean you could put in one or two like red dual lands, but this deck already has just a ton of dual lands and everything. I I don't think you really need it, but you know, it wouldn't be you wouldn't be putting in the red dual lands for Dracius. So that'd be for <clears throat> Kenrith activating the the haste ability. I don't think it's that necessary. So yeah, just basically in, instead of doing these things, just leaving up my options of activating the target player gains five life twice. Um. I won't, I won't, uh, or I, I could just reanimate the Agent of Treachery there. Man, Kenrith is awesome. That card's good. I won't steal any other lands with Agent of Treachery. That'd be mean. We're already going to win. Yeah, I, so yeah, I knew that's what, that's what you meant, Radical Guru. I was just kind of saying that uh, for people watching on YouTube later what what your question was um all right so we're playing against aggro let's get rid of deputy of detention and midnight reaper and we'll play cry the carnariums and I wouldn't mind a veto I could see cutting fibble thip We'll get rid of. Let's get rid of a couple of quasi duplicates. We saw how easy it was for them to kill our stuff, and maybe play some of these five drops instead. Yeah, let's just get rid of quasi duplicate. And I'll get a veto in here because they're playing, you know, more burn spells and risk factor and thing things like that. <laughs> Kenrith dabbling in necromancy. Uh, yeah, could have a, a chromatic lantern. I suppose that that could be something if you if you you know really want to be able to cast. Dracuseth and activate Kenrith. I think I'd like that more than playing red. Um, red lands. All right, so we need to agent a treachery this ley line of combustion, so that anytime they target us with a burn spell, they take the damage. Lotus Field. That's some ramp right there. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I guess that blaze is pretty inescapable. If only we could steal Lotus Field. But alas. It has hexproof. Give me this. Uh, you want to shock me? You take two. What? A Duriel. Wow, that is awesome. Duriel says, my rural Scion Brawl deck's gone crazy. 70 games today, 65 wins. That is incredible. That is incredible. I think I'll just keep up this Doman's Veto. I know, right? I'm so glad the deck is working again, too. Get to actually hover over these and see what's going on. See? Keep them from drawing, too. See, that's why you just play the one Dovin's Veto, just to get him. I don't need to draw a second Dovin's Veto, we just need the one. Just the one. Alright, so we'll bring back the Scholar right now. So that I can get my... My reanimate spells back. Is working smoothly. All right, then the deck. I know, I could have attacked with it first. It's not what Agent Treachery is all about. Take all the things. And then next turn we could Blood for Bones, sack the Agent of Treachery, bring back Agent of Treachery, steal this. Gotta take all the stuff. Yeah. Poor opponent. That's what this deck's all about, is being mean. I 
no, that Lotus Field having Hexproof. I could have, you know, Blood for Bone, sack it again, and then Flickered. I could have just kept on taking more things. Could have kept on taking more things. <laughs> yeah, we had a pretty sweet red deck going there. You know, we had a good amount of mountains. See, we could have we could have hard cast Dracky Seth. So that's how we hard cast Dracky Seth. We just take all of my opponent's mountains. Figured it out. Let's put back Fable Passage. Scholar. <laughs> Why not run two, three agents here? I don't I don't understand the question. Like agent of treachery? Because we, we have those. Is there, is there a different agent that you're referring to? Oh, oh, you're saying why not run? You think we only have one agent? Why not run two or three? No, we we have four. There's there's four agent of treachery in this deck. That's that's what the whole deck is built around is agent of treachery. Yeah, there's there's four of them. Well, I wish we would have cut that land. Yeah, there, there's just one Drachy Seth. I think that's what you're thinking. There's just one Drachy Seth and just one Scholar of the Ages. But there's four. <clears throat> four of those. All right, that doesn't work. <laughs> Good news, we got to shuffle up our library. We definitely need that that library shuffle. Never mind. We did not need the library shuffle. Well, that was unfortunate. Every single one of our draw steps were uncastable, except for the quasi-duplicate. All right. Same sideboard in. Basically, So time wipe's probably better in this matchup. It's just so many five drops. Just everything costs five. But all those five drops are so good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I get for being so mean. Yeah, to my last opponent. Got that karma. Yep, my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, we've, yeah, we've only been playing 24 minutes with this deck. So yeah, this is just match two. So yeah, the leak hasn't been going that long. Yeah, where were all those mountains? Was I supposed to have a whole bunch of mountains? Didn't we take a bunch of those? I 
Okay, well, good news is we only milled over one land. Bad news, I don't really have anything to blood for bones for right now. I kind of need the five lands in this deck. My opponent doesn't know what to do against this charming prince. It's too scary. They just passed the turn. Couldn't figure it out. Oh, that's a bad auto tap. Bad auto tap. It's kind of my fault. Could have just played my land first. Mayhem Devil, but what if I want to sacrifice the Blood for Bones? Where's all of our sweet reanimation targets? There's one. Found one. All right, the agent begins. So I think we just take the Mayhem Devil. Keep them from being able to ping a bunch of stuff. And then I, I did put that land, the white land down to the bottom because I don't want to shock. So I don't have double prints right now. All right, we'll do. We'll take the trade. The less creatures they have, the the worse Priest of Forgotten Gods is. Yeah. Now we're yep making their sacrifice effect worse for sure. Wow. That's rude. Stealing an agent of treachery? That's like so 2020. I'm still here in 2019. I'm just using agent of treachery to steal stuff. My opponent lives in the future. So if they activate Priest of Forgotten Gods, then their priest dies. Yeah, they're playing 4D chess. We're playing checkers. <laughs> yeah, I think they should have st stolen the Mayhem Devil back and then sacrificed and then gotten all the triggers and then killed my agent in treachery. No, so the, the reason why 
No, Wall of Lost Thoughts is better than Merfolk Secret Keeper because, as we saw earlier, this this is an ETB effect of milling the four and not just you pay one mana to mill the four. Um, the ETB effect of milling the four is important because we saw how we flickered our Wall of Lost Thoughts earlier with... Um, with Charming Prince, and so like that's that's important to be able to flicker that. Now things are getting heated. So of course they can bring back Cauldron Familiar. So I, I want to make sure that we have two lethal attackers. Because they can bring back a blocker. Sleep for a week. A week? I think we call that hibernating. Gotta gotta sleep for a strong, not sleep for a week. No, so yeah, whenever the tr the mayhem devil devil trigger happens, the the Cauldron Familiar is not in play yet, so we can't ping the Cauldron Familiar. So this is definitely showing the power of Kenrith here. I just basically get, you know, a bunch of reanimates. I guess I only have, like, the Agent Treachery. That's a cool thing to reanimate right now. We can still get back that Agent. <laughs> yeah, that's all we that's all we really need, but um we can kind of do that infinitely. So basically, okay, so I reanimate agent, I take Witch's Oven, I have Witch's Oven sack agent, then I reanimate agent. I can just do that every single turn is just get agent of treachery. I can just do that <laughs> turn after turn with the the Witch's Oven, Agent of Treachery, Kenrith the Returned King combo. A classic. Jeff the car, only person I bother watching on Twitch. Thanks for being on here. Oh, you're welcome, Jeff. Thank you for watching everything and the Twitch Prime sub, and I appreciate that. And you're actually sub number 10. It looks like I was behind one. So that's a sub goal towards our next 12 hour stream. We should call this deck Civil Forfeiture. Yeah, I mean, this deck could play... Yeah, we could play Cauldron Familiar, which is Oven, for easy... Easy Blood for Bone target. Yeah. That, I mean, it's possible. You basically take out, like, Quasi-Duplicate, Fibble Thip, Legion's End. Um, you know... Midnight Reaper, kind of take out all those things. To like, you know, it's a lot of slots to to play the combo, but it, it is a powerful combo, and it's it's a good combo against aggro decks. And you know, we can just wall of lost thoughts and mill over some kitty cats that we could, can bring back. Yeah, I changed a couple of things with the Orzhov Troll Knights, mostly the sideboard. We'll see how it goes. This is a hand that could use... Um, what's the card that we could use here? Tomebound Lich. 
homebound lich. More like a draw step bound lich. Hmm. That was a dismal draw step. <laughs> Can you complete quest with Sparky? Don't believe so. Come on, play some more creatures. Play another one. And another one. Well, at this rate, we're going to have enough lands to hard cast Drachy Seth. I don't know how we're getting triple triple red yet. But it looks like my opponent is sad they don't have red mana either. Ooh, what's up, wall? Wow. Man, even China doesn't have a wall that was that great. Yeah, so they were missing land drops for sure. Looking for red mana. Give me that. I'm trying. Uh, trying with the puns. Well, I mean, my opponent's probably not happy that they have no red mana, but I mean, I don't have any red mana either. I mean, I got this Dracu Seth here. It's not like I have red mana. I mean, it's pretty fair. They're missing a color. I, I'm missing a color. I don't know why they're so upset. I'm, I'm of course, being sarcastic with that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my plan, is to steal the opponent's mountain so he can cast Drakiseth. Seth. That's why we have Drakiseth Seth in the deck. So, we, you know, like, that's that's our whole plan of casting Drakiseth Seth, to steal mountains. You know, like, last last match we stole three mountains. We were going to be able to cast Drakiseth. Seth. We had to just steal three mountains. So really, my opponent, like, they may be upset that they don't have red mana, but if they play red mana, all that means is that I get red mana. It's like, my opponent's not cooperating with me getting red mana here. So really, I should be the one that's upset. I mean, how am I supposed to cast this Drakki Seth if they don't play Mountains? Balder Galder with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Balder. Man, Charming Prince is such a good draw. So we can, you know, Blood for Bones, sack the agent, bring it back, and then also Flicker agent. So we'd be able to steal two swamps here. But my opponent's not playing anymore. Thanks, Balder. All right, so 11th sub of the day. Okay, 2-0. Victor. Victor Y. 
I don't know what the last name is that starts with a Y. Victor Young, maybe? Victor Young. Fun Vogel with the Twitch Prime sub. Another new sub today. 12 subs and a lot of new subs today. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. I like hitting land drops, but I think we got to try for something else. All right, I'm in there. <laughs> what about tomorrow's stream is going to make it so historic? Because <laughs> it's 12 hours. That's what makes it so historic. All right, get some scrizzles. Usually the only deck playing Temple of Scryumph these days is Jeskai Control, like Jeskai Fires. So I'm, I'm expecting Deafening Clary on here, so I, I want to lead with Midnight Reaper over Tonebound Lich. Rude. I didn't want them to play it just because I was expecting it. Ooh, Outlaws Merry Mint. That'd be a cool one to take. Hmm. Boo, boo. Good. Not a... <clears throat> Not a deafening clarion. Wow. They don't care if I draw them discard. All right, time to take these merriments. Yoink. And yoink. All right, now we're a lot more merry over here now. <laughs> you made this? I made this. <laughs> this deck's so mean. Okay, so they're playing uh, Mardu cards. Let's play Thought Erasure, or Jeskai cards. Let's play Thought Erasure instead of... that. Yeah, Deputy's going to die. So instead of the Legion's End and the Deputy, we'll get Thought Erasures in here. Maybe a couple Vetoes instead of... Hmm... 
instead of a quasi duplicate. I don't love quasi duplicate against decks with a lot of removal. We've kind of been playing against decks with a lot of removal, even the aggro decks. And then honestly, Draki Seth. Draki Seth can probably go. We're just going to Ancient Treachery them to death. Oh, yep, yep, go ahead. Yeah, you're missing a quasi duplicate. Play a Spark Double instead. Yes, that sounds like a good one. Because Spark Double, you get to copy Kenrith also. So that's cool. And you can copy Draki Seth. Yeah, if you're missing a quasi duplicate, playing Spark Double, that's a good one. Uh, I don't remember if we saw any blue. I mean, we saw we saw the land. Yes, yeah, so like we saw blue because we saw the land that um, is like the Planeswalker mana. And so like you're so they're playing that to play Teferi. Like they're not going to play that Planeswalker land with red white cards and yeah that thing, bacon. Like they're not going to be eating bacon with red white lands and not be playing Teferi. Playing bass. Sub notification. It's working. Thank you, playing bass. Ugh, this is an ugly hand. Just take it all. Yeah, no bacon without blue. Um... We have, like, the Reaper to kind of protect against Clarion. That means we'd have to take Prison Realm. We could take Bay. I kind of want to just take Narset, though. Then also, Drawn from Dreams is really annoying. That's a really annoying hand to deal with. That's a good one. Prison Realm on that thing? In this economy? Oh, no. That hurts. Not our fires yet. Get out of my way. I'm burning up here. The past, present, and All right, phone sounds pretty good. Check out these fireworks. I have just the trick for this. I have come for vengeance and blood.
Well, that's spicy. For a drink. Is it just me? Or is it getting a little warm in here? Meditate and prepare. Jeez. I know my responsibility. That's annoying. Just play another Narset. Okay, okay, that's good. All right, so we'll take Chandra and Teferi. Take the fires. If I take fires, they can't cast Nicol Bolas. But if I take fires, they just bounce it with Teferi. And then play it. So I think the answer is Teferi. No, because like basically these just add. This is two mana of different colors. So to cast Bolas, they would need three of these. So without fires, they couldn't actually cast Bolas because they can add one black, two black. They couldn't have all three black. I can't draw another creature or draw another card because of Narset. The darkness within. That's a good one. Mm, I did not. I did not auto tap that good enough. Darn it! Should auto tap that better. Nope. Stop. Okay. Okay. Because yeah, I need to play my swamp first, so that so then I could flicker charm. So I could have charming prince flicker this. I'd have to fairy bounce the prison realm, and then. Uh, get this back and flicker Agent of Treachery again to come back on their end step. So I was going to be able to double Agent... So basically how I want this to happen... Yeah, I, but then I couldn't hold up Veto, so I need to play the Swamp first. But so then... So then we cast the Charming Prince in hand, flicker... It, you know, so we steal, like... Um, we steal their Nicol Bolas, and then at end step we steal their Fires of Invention. But then we also flicker Agent of Treachery again at end step... Um, because we would have, because this would have entered and flickered the first Charming Prince. So then the first Charming Prince comes back yet again. Flicker the Agent of Treachery again at end step so that it's gone. So even if they have a sweeper, they can't kill the Agent of Treachery. It's an exile. And then at their end step, it will come back and we'll steal something else. So they, they kind of had everything that game. And we took it all. Their hand was awesome. 
if you like kind of go back and see like my opponents like what they were playing like each turn their hands were awesome and we just took all their stuff yeah i gotta manually tap those utility lands yeah i i messed up with the tapping there but it's all good they they conceded all right we're three and oh our deck's looking awesome Charming Prince has just been incredible with Agent of Treachery here with this deck. Definitely worth it to splash white in this deck for Charming Prince. This card's been amazing. I don't know what that long poem you just read was, Todd, but it sounded great. <laughs> okay, so we'll have Wall of Fill the Graveyard. I guess we keep it because we can discard it to the Lich. Ooh. To play in the, the league like I'm playing here, it, it has an entry fee. But you don't... Um... But you can also just play, yeah, you can play just regular traditional standard matches with no entry fee, nothing. You can play ranked for free or just regular uh, play mode, either one. Don't like how this Temple of Silence is going to come into play tapped. We gotta take their arc light phoenixes. Yep, historics. Yep, there's gonna be an update tomorrow with a lot more historic stuff. I need untapped mana. Ugh, it's not untapped mana, but that's a cool card. Where's my untapped mana? Still not on tap mana. VT log. Thanks for keeping up with that nine month streak. So many months. So much hype. Thank you so much, VT log. Yes, Spark Double does re-trigger ETB of Copied Creature, yes. Yep, it enters the battlefield as the creature. Uh, both, Egrok. Both Historic Rank and a Historic Event are both coming tomorrow. The Event is best of one, Ranked is best of three. That was a good turn five. Target that. Tough. It's toughness two or less, I'm telling you. Mm, they're not going for it. All right, get these Cry of the Carnariums. Deputy of Detentions. Um, nice some vetoes. All right, let's give this a try. <laughs> yeah, Legacy's on Arena now. We got Dredge vs. Reanimator. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, we got legacy. Legacy action going on now. Gotta counter Drown Secrets. That card's incredibly powerful. Gotta counter that thing. It's their best card. They always have it. So I can either scry to or draw then discard. I don't really have anything that I want to discard right now. I kind of want to scry to. Well, they should have saw if I targeted that first. Perfect. Um, yeah. Keep both of those. Take that land too. Tell me to chill out. Get the double chill. If we draw a land, we can Blood for Bones plus, you know, to get Agent Treachery in play, plus Charming Prince and Flicker it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our deck's been pretty fun to play. It's it's real mean. I'm sure my opponents don't like that I'm stealing everything, but it's been sweet. I I really like that Jeskai Fires match. That's that game too. That was awesome. Welcome wow. Behold, That's a jerk move. Your nightmares That's a jerk move. What do you think about eye collectors for an Orzhov reanimator to curve mana? Pretty budget on your arena collection. No cavalier knights, no agent of treachery due to Esper. To, to do Esper. Gotcha. Um, I'm not sure if, if, yeah, if you're just doing Orzhov, I don't. Agent of treachery is kind of really the, the real payoff. I'm not sure if you have a whole lot of payoffs there. Um, but yeah, if you're going budget, let me see this eye collector. So whenever it deals combat to, to a player, each player mills one. Okay, so they they targeted themselves. There may be better options there. There, I, I think there there may be an artifact that has like both players mill, or you can mill yourself. But I guess Eye Collector works really well with Blood for Bones because you need creatures to sacrifice. So yeah, you could do yeah, that's not bad. Uh 
Wow, they just let me hit with Tonebound Lynch. That was probably a mistake. I leave you. My dreams dissipate like smoke. All right, time to have some fun. Time to steal stuff. Give me that. Flicker. I got rid of a Phoenix and a third Drown Secrets. Yeah, we talked. We talked about. Uh, yeah, we just we just played against two uh, real aggressive decks there with the the Mardu tokens. We talked about some some changes to it afterwards. Um, yeah, I just did, we didn't have a, a good sideboard plan at all against aggressive decks. Yep. Yeah, the reason why we we were gonna win this game is because we countered that drown secrets that was that was huge i don't really know why they're not like blocking with merfolk secret keeper at all like did, didn't they just like not block my tutu just a little bit ago fear terror and horror are the ingredients of the birth your fight remember your nightmare <laughs> yeah. Can you go? Yeah, you love Royal Scions and your animator. Can you go four color? Who donated for this glorious deck? You want to thank them? Um, it was. I had. A... All right, let's see. Let's just load this. Um, Earwig, Old Fiend, or Old Field. But yeah, Earwig did. Yeah, it's a it's a really good one. We um, we made some changes at the beginning of the stream. Because uh, the donation deck that they had, they they wanted me to take a look at it and maybe make some changes. And so we made a few changes, not a ton. Um, but yeah, it's been working really well for sure. Uh, let's just go with this again. Here we go. All right, so multiple Ashiox, that's going to be tough for us. Uh, see, I can tell it's in 1440 now. I can tell the, the graphics are, are upgraded on my side. I think it just... Yeah, I think it just upgraded yet. Yeah. I would I'd really like to be able to play in 1440 all the time. This looks so nice. 
even though it just streams in the 1080. But it makes it slower, so and more lag. So I gotta go back to 1080 and have it be a, just the slightest bit blurry compared to the 1440. I don't know if I'm supposed to be keeping this. I like the cry of the carnarium. Obviously, we need to we need help with our draws. We'll see. Okay, yeah, this deck's definitely convinced you to change from your Demir reanimator to Esper. Yeah, gotta get those. Um Gotta get those Charming Princes in there. Damn it. It's a tough decision with like the Wall of Lost Thoughts, because if they, they could start just trying to go after me and mill me out, Milled over one Blood for Bones, which is unfortunate. That's a card I want to draw. At a second, uh, it's a second Blood for Bones. Great four cards for them, too. Two Creeping Chills and an Arc Amoeba. I think they got me. Ashok's a tough one. I leave. I aspire to form. Yeah, I wish, wish we had another white mana too with this Dovin's Veto. But we don't. I mean, I could quasi-duplicate this and mill them over four and keep them from drawing this opt. I don't, I don't know if that's the best use of my quasi-duplicate. And then, of course, the quasi-duplicate would just get exiled by the uh, Ashiok. Right afterwards. Uh, no, I, th I think I think I like Bond Revival more than Connive Concoct. Um, but maybe not. Maybe maybe Connive Concoct is the way to go. Because 
Because, yeah, Dracuseth is really, like, the only real thing that you gain from the haste. Yeah, may maybe Knife Concoct's the way to go. I just think it's just so likely that they have more counter magic. Not sure why they're milling them themselves a whole lot. But then also sometimes milling me with Ashiok. It's like they're milling both of us. Like I feel like they could have milled me out. I definitely think they could have milled me out. They would have just been targeting me the whole time. Alright, have a good night, Storm. Why can't Cry the Canarium be an instant? <laughs> is it yeah, is a flash is a very good very good strong deck. Yeah, it's it's a good choice. I was basically testing, you know, we hadn't seen a single Phoenix yet. I was thinking maybe with having all those extra counter spells, maybe they sideboard out the Phoenixes. I wouldn't expect them to. But, you know, might as, might as well try, and then, you know, maybe they just don't have phoenixes, and we just um, copy our wall of lost thoughts twice and, you know, mill over eight cards. They had 24, and you never know. That was tough. I, I should have mulliganed that hand. That hand wasn't good. I should have mulliganed my hand. I got... That's a greedy, greedy keep. Okay. Let's get back to it. There we go. We got Mill and Reanimate. Now we need Lands. Yeah, you can steal some stuff with Connive. Once upon a time. Don't see that very often. Alright, Temple. Put that to the bottom. Hello. Want that fourth or fifth land? Yeah, so Connive is just power two or less. You can't take Mayhem Devil. But yeah, you could take like a, a Paradise Druid or something like that. Revel with your king. I think a little merriment is in order. Um. Yeah, so basically, I invite you how how my opponent's playing Oko and Once Upon a Time and stuff is because 
any land. So I'm going with the scry over the wall of lost thoughts because I need land. Oh my gosh, I wish I would have gone wall over wall of lost thoughts. Um, actually, I think we just take it. Yeah, we just we just keep this because basically. So we're gonna draw Charming Prince, and then I'm gonna mill over Agent of Treachery with the wall, and then hopefully we draw land. Cause we, I really want Agent of Treachery in my my graveyard, of course. But anyway, how my opponent's doing this is is yeah, we're in a standard event. Um, it was just banned on Monday. What's today? Wednesday. So if you if you if you were already joined in the event before Monday, before it was banned. They're, they still allow you to, to finish your event and play the rest play the rest of your matches. So my so yeah, so my opponent just hadn't hadn't finished the rest of their matches yet. Ooh, I like the pay two life there. Show of strength. All right, we just got to draw land. We've we haven't seen very many lands. We've only milled over two lands out of all these cards, and we put something down to the bottom. So there's only been five lands in the top twenty cards so far. Dismal backwater. You're so dismal. Alright, but at least we'll be able to steal two things next turn with Agent of Treachery. So I'm gonna just go infinite with the Charming Princes to keep them flickering. So this is a this is a pretty cool little party trick here. We're just gonna go infinite with Charming Princes. Keep them flickering. So that whenever Agent of Treachery comes back in, we'll be able to flicker it. Thanks, Choco. Well, hope yeah, hope you have a good day at work. I invite you to change your ways. Oh, come on. That's rude. I guess I have to scry to make sure we hit a land drop. Now. Mine is yours, and yours is mine. Oh, what a top deck. Another one? Every tale about me is absolute nonsense. And absolutely true. Your new look is enchanting. So that's lethal now. <sighs> that was rough. We just couldn't hit lands. And then... Drew another one. All 
All right, so Noxious Grasp. Extra Deputy. I mean, I like what we got going on. I think we should be able to go over the top of them. We'll take out take out Kenrith, because that card gets elked pretty easily. Yeah, I didn't take their agent because their agent was just a 2-3, so it did, the 2-3 doesn't block the 3-3s very well. No blue mana. But like, Tonebound Lich Agent is so good. Darn. Just running into some consistency issues here. Looks like turn two Oko again. Yay, not Oko. I guess they could just have turn three Nissa. No Nissa either. No 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 Oko. No Nissa. Okay, we need to again. We need to draw land, and I'm definitely gonna need a bond revival on five. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're gonna have their their five drop for multiple turns before I have mine. Unfortunately. Okay, good. Okay, deputy can deputy can do some work also. All right, they don't have a counter spell here. Jackie Seth wins here if they don't have a counter spell. I mean, they can't have a counter spell and have everything else, right? Resolve. Got to be kidding me. They they have a counter spell too. Why is their life so great? Darn. Yes, my, my opponent joined this league before the bannings happened. So they, they're still allowed to play their matches. So that's why my opponent can play these banned cards because they just they submitted this deck before the bannings were announced. I cannot protect you anymore. We gotta draw another bond revival. Okay, that's not the that's not so bad. 
No. Oh, why'd I play that land last turn? Oh, wow, that's such a beating. I only have three Bond Revivals. So that's two of them gone now. Wow. That's, that was pretty unreal. Yep, just a little off. Boo. Still a good league overall, though. Yeah, still a good league. Cool build here and everything. Um... You know, we, we just we ran into the you know, we got two losses. We ran into a deck, you know, one deck that had just a, a whole bunch of cards that are banned, and so you know, like you can kind of throw that loss out the window. And then our other deck, our opponent was playing a whole bunch of Ashiox in their sideboard, which you know that that's obviously really difficult for us too. Um, that's you know like a, one of the worst cards in the format for us to see, just a whole bunch of Ashiox. Um, so you know, like that's so. Those were our two losses. So, but besides that, we we won the rest, including that that win against that Jess guy, was really impressive. So as as long as you don't run into cards that are banned or Ashiox, um, <laughs> yo, you're you're great, Eastwall. You're good because yeah, I know I know you need to finish your games. Um, so yeah, you're good. So yeah, as long as you can you can dodge those two things, um, the deck played pretty well. Like it it honestly was uh, pretty impressive there. Um, yeah, I liked it a whole lot. Um, but yeah, mold. I guess that last one. Oh man, yeah, that that disdainful stroke got me because we mold to five and had turn three Nissen. We had it covered. Uh, so close. All right. Anyway, about our deck, uh, Kenrith was awesome. Um, Scholar and Draggy South were both good. Uh, don't love the the deputy. Fibblethip was pretty whatever. I think three quasi-duplicates is too many quasi-duplicates. I think I would want to replace a quasi-duplicate with something else. I don't know exactly what. I don't know if, like, another Soren, maybe some kind of removal spell. We don't really need that much removal, though. Um, something else. I, th I think that I think the third quasi-duplicate is too much. I think this should probably be just a one or a two of, not three. So, like, that's one or two free slots. You can take out the other quasi-duplicate probably also also um could just play honestly maybe just play like what if you just have a, a few thought erasures you yeah, maybe instead of two of the quasi duplicates you have like two thought erasures is that is that weird you know just playing like two thought erasures Just another card, you know, it has the surveil. It can it can help protect like these things, you know. I kinda like that. Maybe getting a third veto in the sideboard. The vetoes the vetoes were awesome. Kinda like just playing like two thought ragers in here. You play Drown in the Lock in your version? We're not really building our opponent though, or, or we're not, and we're not interacting with our opponent to make to get them to have cards in their graveyard. Discovery is also another good one, but honestly, Thought Erasure is just really, really powerful. You know, knowing knowing your opponent's hand and exactly the, like how to play your Blood for Bones and Bond Revival, what to play around, what 
what you should be targeting with Agent of Treachery because of what's in their hand, all that kind of stuff. Thought Erasure is just really good. Probably just want three Thought Erasures in the main and take out this Fibblethip also. Um, and then, yeah, we're talking about Connive Concoct. Because Concoct, as far as like with Bond Revival, Concoct gets you the Surveil 3. This gets you Haste. The Surveil 3 is definitely better for everything except for Dracuseth. But I think that the... I think Dracuseth Bond Revival is just so incredibly powerful that I think it's worth it's worth having the one Dracuseth in the Bond Revivals over playing Connive Concoct, honestly. Because Dracuseth Bond Revival is just... It's just so incredibly powerful. It's too good. It's basically just too good to not play the, the Haste. Even... You know, even though this is going to be a better card most of the time, but the times that you you have this, it's just it's honestly just too good. Like that's that's a, there's nothing else to say. It's too good. Hey, Bullis. Yeah, we took out Secret Keepers. Um, if you want more of that effect, you know, you can play Secret Keepers as well. But I like Wall of Lost Thoughts more because it's a it's a it's an ETB trigger that you can flicker. Um, we did that a couple of times. You know, we had mill over four. We didn't really have anything in our graveyard. We wanted to mill some more, and so we had Charming Prince flicker. Um, that's that's the problem with Seeker Keepers. You don't get to flicker. Um, now I have another sideboard slot available. Um, we talked about maybe playing Chemister's Insight. Uh, how you, you know you mill you mill stuff over with Wall of Lost. That's maybe mill over this, and you get to jumpstart. And then, like, the Jumpstart can also have you discard something in your hand, too. So this is another option here. Maybe maybe, maybe Insight instead of Reaper. Reaper Midnight Reaper is honestly really good, though. Because, yeah, we're playing against the Clarions and stuff and bringing back... Min yeah, Midnight Reaper is actually good. I, I liked that. You could have, like, a, a sideboard Insight if you you know, like, your sideboard game is going to go longer and you, want, you need more card draw and stuff. Just having a Chemistry's Insight in the sideboard, that's... Nothing wrong with that. That's not a not a bad option there. For that other sideboard slot. Um, yeah, and I, and I like Chemistry's Insight more than like Radical Idea because I I want to like some real card advantage there, not just a card that replaces itself. Um, hey Panda. Um, okay. So that's that's a uh, Esper Reanimator. Oh, I guess this is one too many cards in the main deck. How do we get one too many cards in the main deck? Because didn't I take out two quasi duplicates and the Fibble Tip for the three Thought Erasures? Isn't that all I did? Oh, this Connive. That Connive shouldn't be in there. There we go. Um, do you know where their Growth Spiral lands count towards my daily quest for land drops? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah, there we go. That's Esper Reanimator. So if you're watching on YouTube, I uh, hope you hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. And of course, leave comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. And if you're playing it yourself, um, let me know how you're, how you're doing with it. If you're having fun stealing all your opponent's stuff with the Agent of Treacheries. Um, and of course, also for those of y'all watching on YouTube, I hope you check out my Patreon page. Um, there's a link down below, but it's just patreon.com slash Todd Stevens MTG. It's just three bucks a month. So if you uh, like my content, you know, it's, that's, you know, like the price of like a tip at a restaurant or something, you know, just $3 a month. And, um, I'm putting written content over there on Monday. We wrote about, um, the, what I think about standard after, like right after the bannings. And then today I wrote about Historic and the 20 new Historic cards that we're going to be seeing tomorrow for our 12-hour Historic stream. So I hope you all check that out. And I'll continue to, to write stuff. And, and if, you, if any of the decks that I play that, that you really like that you want Cyborg Guides for, uh, you know, let me know there on Patreon and I'll uh, make Cyborg Guides um, for, for posts for the different decks and stuff over there too. All right, but that's, he that's it here for Esper Reanimator. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.